listening to The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome back to The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. And we hitting you with our first of three NFL mock drafts covering the Saints. We're doing several rounds. Of course, you know, the Saints don't have a a uh, second round pick this year, but we're doing all of the picks, full draft, straight for Saints fans. And of course, DC gave you his in the first segment. He broke it down for you. It's my turn. In this uh, segment, I'm going to give you my uh, uh, picks, uh, who I think the Saints would do good to get. And uh, and then, of course, after that segment, we'll cover some boxing talk. We'll get right into it. But here we go, DC. Okay, now, a little uh, disclaimer, I guess you could say, on, on my draft. is The way I was approaching this draft, of course, a lot of people say, well, hey, we need defensive end help. Um, we need defensive help, Pat. Bad, bad, you can never have too many defensive ends. But I think the Saints covered that base pretty well. And I've seen some articles from different people. It's credible. That made the argument that the Saints need a defensive end that can come in and, and start opposite of Cam. And of course, the Saints have been really been trying to draft guys, Kakaha, who had who had the production at some times when he's healthy, sacks, when healthy, but he, he but he can't right, he can't remain healthy. So uh, he's seen more as a situational guy. Then of course you had the re, last year the Saints reached and got uh, out there and got the guy from Florida Atlantic. Um, uh, what's Trey his name? Hendrickson. Trey Hendrickson. Yeah, yeah. And Trey good. Hendrickson is a pretty good guy, too. He looked pretty well when he was out there. He got hurt a few times last season. So the issue is I thought about guys like Arden Key if they're available, but I went my direction. So I'll mix here, here go our picks. Okay, with the first pick, the Saints have first pick in round one, uh, 27th pick in round one, I took defensive lineman Deron Payne. Now, good pick. Deron Payne is one of those guys. He's 6'2", 300 pounds, and he's one of those stuffer guys. He had a uh, bench press of 26, uh, 27 reps. Hey, Sonny, and, Michael, uh, make sure up about it. That, that guy <laughs> there is, is is a fantastic run stuffer. He'd be like, well, Q, why would you not get the pass rush? So I think the Saints, the Saints did a pretty decent job of signing a lot of guys. Of course, remember, they got they re-signed Okafor. Then you say, okay, what if he don't rehab? You still got George Johnson. You still got Kakaha. You still got uh, El Kadeem Muhammad. You still have... Uh, 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 Trey, Hendrickson. Trey Hendrickson there, so it's a oh, everybody bev- ain't gonna be hurt, when, right? So the, right, I mean, happening? I think they done adjusted we all lost that. Ogafor, uh, Kakaha, Trey Hendrickson, and still came and you produced with Joy. Found Joy Johnson off the street. He came yeah, in and made it happen. Johnson. So what I'm saying is, I think the Saints go in a different direction. Maybe if one of those top guys is there or they fall to him, but I think the Saints would do better to go in the interior. And I seen what they were doing with uh, them, them Dominic and Sue, and I was like, well, I, I see the Saints want to improve interior as well as the edge. So don't forget about the interior. And I took Deron Payne because he's a pusher in the center. He's also a run stuff, and he'll fit well next to Sheldon Rankins and swallow up a block or two to help out the pass rushers. So that's my thinking. The third pick, and uh, uh, the third pick, because we don't have a second in the third round, I took Luke Falk out of Washington State. Now, Luke Falk is a quarterback. Uh, from Washington State. Now, he's been there for a while out of Washington State. He was, if he did came out last year, he probably went up a little higher. This time around, I took him with the 27th pick in the third round because the Saints definitely need a quarterback. Uh, of course, you know, Lamar Jackson, DC's favorite guy, wasn't there. It's not going to be there. He wasn't available. <laughs> well, you uh, think he's going to be there in the third round? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Luke Falk is my guy. I think the Saints can mold him into something. And then let's go to the fourth round. Chris Herndon, uh, the Miami draft pick. I think, DC, didn't you yeah, I, take I, Herndon I, I, too? I had him in the third round, man. I couldn't okay. wait until the fourth. He, he okay. was about to be drafted if I didn't get him next. Right. So, Chris Herndon fell to me in the fourth round. I took him out of Miami. I do like the, his athletic ability. Ability. I do like the fact that he fits certain skills like a Jimmy Graham would have. And and I think that the Saints do well with Miami, a former Miami tight ends. You had Jimmy Graham. You also had guys like uh, Jeremy Shockey, who wasn't uh, uh, drafted by the Saints, but of course he came out of Miami. So the Saints do well with Miami uh, uh, tight ends, and hopefully Herndon can do well for us. Fourth round, in the fifth round, uh, the Saints took, you know, of course, in the fifth round, pick number 10, the Saints took. Uh, Traquan Smith, the wide receiver out of USF, uh, Central Florida. This guy is a pretty good little guy. He catches well. Uh, over uh, last year alone, he had fifty plus catches. 
uh, double digits in the touchdowns, 11 plus 11 plus 100 yards in receiving yards, averaging almost 20 yards a reception. Traquan Smith is a burner. He catches the ball well. And he has good size. He'll be an excellent addition uh, uh, coming in to help out the Saints wide receiver co- uh, core. Now, of course, the Saints have two fifth-round draft picks this year because of the trade that sent uh, uh, our favorite, one of our favorite linebackers, uh, to Miami in turn they gave us a five and then of course Adrian Peterson trade gave us a six uh, down the line but Bo Scarborough out of Alabama he fell down in his draft and I said you know what Bo Scarborough will make an addition an excellent addition to the Saints running back tandem because remember when great we, safety valve in case r- somebody get hurt exactly and, and DC the, the one of the great things man you had the argument on a previous show about Darius Geis at that position, this is not this is not the same issue as you're saying. We he didn't take him too high. Uh, we got him in the what the second of the fifth uh, the two f- fifth round picks. He comes in. He's a guy that's totally different than what they have. He's a big guy that runs over people, short yardage back for you. Put him on the goal line. He ar- guaranteed to average at least four yards a carry for you. Very big guy. He also can catch a little bit too. He can block really well. He'll fit Sounds well like in there. So, perfect size running back. Huh? Plus, he'll be is you'll have Mark Ingram, who's from Alabama, and Bo Scarborough, who's Alabama. So those Alabama brethren, along with uh, Tennessee, you have a full SEC backfield that with the Saints running back. So, so it'll be a nice find a way to get him some touches too, even though he won't take either, anybody's job. <laughs> right, exactly. So I, I, I like that. Let's move into the sixth round pick. The first of my six two six round picks. Uh, it is Christian Campbell. He's a big cornerback out of Penn State. Christian Campbell, nice call for me. I like the fact that Campbell is a big guy. He's six foot one, less than two hundred pounds, but he's a rangy guy. He's uh, long, and he has good, deep, really good speed on him. And I think that he will be an excellent addition to that young uh, cornerback core because we need those big cornerbacks. Uh, you can be raised right behind the guys like. Uh, 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 Crawley and the rest of those guys is uh, Patrick Robinson. Now that he's back, he can help these guys develop. And of course, that's another new personnel, a new toy for secondary Coleman. coach uh, Glenn to play with. So, right. So, yeah. So that that's a Coleman is an interception artist, so I'm sure you can and work with, with him. guys too. Exactly. Now going into the the other six round pick is Cole Madison, big offensive lineman out of Washington State. I took a a uh, a offensive l- a tackle there because I think the Saints would do good to get you know add some depth. Madison is a big guy out of Washington State. He'll be able to come in and play for you. And and uh, Madison played a little bit of the guard positions in college. A uh, little bit of guard. He's familiar with a little bit of guard. Play mostly tackle. So he's somebody. And remember, late in the draft. You know, you find we'll find our talent like we find a guy like Zach Streif, like we found guys like Jeremiah Bushrod, who's also on the team now. And we find those really good, talented offensive linemen later in the draft. And then with the final pick, the seventh pick, uh, seven round pick uh, and the seventh, the last pick for the Saints, I took an edge rusher named Quaylen Cunningham out of Texas A&M. And uh, he's he has he's raw, similar to El Kadeem Muhammad, very raw. But with, he has the look. He has the ability. Uh, he has certain traits that you can groom to really show up. Like you have Noel Kadim had those. He led the uh, the defensive uh, lineman in sacks during the preseason. Not so much in the regular season, but because he didn't get to play. play. <laughs> right, he didn't get to play. But this guy is another guy that you can bring in and kind of help out. Quail and Cunningham, look him up. Uh, and DC, that's everybody uh, dealing with my first of three draft uh, uh, mock drafts. How you like it? Uh, I like it, but I got one statement before we just get into the draft. You made me think about something, man. It okay. was very perplexing. Like, why didn't Al Kadim Muhammad get to play? We lost all of our defensive ends. So I always found that very uh, perplexing. And they went and got George Johnson he off the street four, before they gave Al Kadim Muhammad an opportunity in the preseason. Yeah. Again, this is against backups, but still, he's a rookie. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do in the preseason. You're supposed to shine. You're supposed to show out. So, I don't know. I found that very intriguing. But al Qadim Muhammad could be our uh, junior galette. If you remember, we got a guy like that. Uh, hopefully, he don't try to we don't need beat people no ass on the beach with a belt. Uh, yeah, we don't but, need uh, no more <laughs> No, but no. Look at the good side of junior, though. We set junior galette down. We basically shelved him for about a year or two. And then we started playing him, man. Uh, he did the same thing in the preseason. Did pretty well, and we started playing him, and he showed up. So if the Saints don't draft an edge rougher in the draft, 
that could be a, a hint that uh, Al Qadim Muhammad is showing out behind the scenes. But I like your draft. I like mine more, of course. Of course. <laughs> but um, I think we both uh, had different perspectives on it, but we both had good drafts. And if not everybody, the Saints definitely will at least pick one or two of the guys that we pointed out. Yeah, it was it, that's 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 well said, DC. Because I I know I was looking at a few of the mock drafts. Some some about the bigger guys, the uh, the Todd McShays, the so called draft gurus, wrong, man. Uh, Todd McShay and uh, and Mel Kiper Juniors and those type they of guys. Say we, they, man, the Saints ain't picking no damn tight end in the first round. Well, Mel Kiper never believes happened. so. So it you never know, happened. that's one of the things that we said. You know what? Uh, we take a look at it. We'll do our own, and uh, me and if we follow a team, perhaps this might be a certain move. But everybody have their mindset on edge rusher, and uh, for the for that first round pick, that and mean, I think it'd be surprised. I don't think you that far off on the wide receiver pick. However, I really do think if you look really hard at some of the more key positions that the team could be utilizing, wide receiver most certainly is one of those things. Dude, when you watch Definitely the games the last year, Alvin there's Kamara. nothing behind uh, Mike Thomas. And Ted Ginn Jr. Now that Willis Need is out there. Alvin Kamara had to be a receiver. Not that, you know, he has that versatility where he could do it. He absolutely had to for our offense last year. When we didn't have an Alvin Kamara, you could see Clay. We were missing another receiver. That's as big. well as a tight end. That, hey, well, I mean, the Saints covered some of that base that got Ben Watson to come back here. Of course, we're going to be looking at uh, Kobe Fleener as he watching his watch. June first comes. I, you know, we definitely know he's out of here. But anyway, that's the rest of the move this stuff already. already. Well, he done robbed the bank already. <laughs> he done stole the money anyway from us the last couple of years. But anyway, that'll do it for the Saints talk, the draft talk. We appreciate you on that. But stay tuned. We're coming at you with the boxing next. Stay with us. Oh, 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 oh